President Eisenhower appoints Governor Earl Warren of California as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The 62-year-old Californian, shown here with his family, becomes the 14th man in our history to occupy the nation's highest judicial post. He succeeds the late Fred M. Vinson of Kentucky. Governor of his state for 10 years, Earl Warren will be the second Republican on the Supreme Court. He will preside over a tribunal which is faced with history-making decisions. Warren's tenure as Chief Justice from 1953 to 1969 signifies a turning point in American history because of his radicalization of judicial decision-making with special emphasis on civil rights and rights of the accused. On May 17, 1954, the Chief Justice handed down a ruling that permanently changed the course of American civil rights. Brown v. Board of Education, Topeka, Kansas, expressed not only a commitment to equality under the Constitution, but a radical new take on the role of the judiciary a philosophy with broad repercussions that have shaped the history of the Supreme Court. Unlike its predecessors, the Warren Court expressed a trend of judicial activism, which profoundly impacted the modern idea of the role of the Supreme Court, making it a turning point in American history. Judicial activism refers to the interpretation of the needs of the nation as part of the role of the judiciary, whereas in the past justices had relied almost exclusively on the word of the Constitution and the precedent of other cases. In the cases of Brown v. Board of Education and Miranda v. Arizona, the Supreme Court made revolutionary changes in civil rights and criminal proceedings that were not necessarily spelled out in the Constitution. Rather, they balanced precedent and the letter of the law with the need of such a ruling to create new laws. While the ultimate implementation of both of these rulings has universally been heralded as a success, at the time, both the decisions themselves as well as the liberal judicial philosophies behind them were controversial. Though still not unanimously supported, many progressive justices continue to adhere to this sense of activism from the bench to establish rulings and precedents today. This isn't to say that the judicial activism of the Warren years was the only example of such principles. However, prior to his swearing in, these decisions were for the most part few and far between. For example, the landmark 1944 case Korematsu v. United States very deliberately was decided in favor of a need to protect national security, even if this entailed infringing the rights of Japanese Americans. While it remains to this day one of the most conservative decisions in the court's history, the judges used the need for national security, not precedent or the Constitution, to make their decision. In other words, despite a conservative ruling, the court still exercised judicial activism in their decision-making process. In a similar case, Shank v. United States was also decided without constitutional basis to protect national security. But before Warren's term as Chief Justice, these cases were very much the exception and not the rule. In general, the court made decisions based entirely on the word of the Constitution and judicial precedent. Warren's liberal philosophies were the first, and arguably only, real trend of judicial activism since John Marshall's early rulings demonstrating the practical role of the court in government. The Warren Court signified a turning point in the influence of the judicial system in American society through the radical use of judicial activism in establishing new precedents. Rather than upholding or reinforcing previously made legislation in their decision making, as past courts had done, the Warren Court took a more liberal stand in protection of the people and personal rights. Seeking equality and criminal justice, the case Gideon v. Wainwright ruled that the Constitution required states to appoint an attorney to criminal defendants who could not afford a lawyer. Diverging from common law interpretation, the ruling in Gideon stems from the judge's belief that the accused has a right to an attorney. Adding to this development in the rights of those convicted of a crime, the court declared, All evidence obtained by searches and seizures in violation of the Constitution is, by the Fourth Amendment, inadmissible in a state court in Map v. Ohio. Through a reinterpretation of the Fifth Amendment, Warren's decision in Miranda v. Arizona went on to create the historic Miranda rights. The ruling required that citizens be informed of their rights before questioning. A significant and controversial case during Warren's tenure, Escobedo v. Illinois expanded the rights of the accused through the reaffirmation of a criminal's right to remain silent. The prohibition of prayer in schools was decided in Angle v. Vitale, a decision based off separation of church and state under the First Amendment. However, this represented an overreach by the Supreme Court because this religious decision is reserved by the Constitution to representatives elected by the people. The radical action of the court in Angle served as a support for future cases in which prayer in school was limited. 
The most important decision by the Warren Court, and one of the most influential in the 20th century, was Brown v. Board of Education, Topeka, Kansas, a case that catalyzed the civil rights movement of the 1960s. The precedent of separate but equal, that separate facilities for blacks and whites were constitutional as long as they were equal, established by Plessy v. Ferguson 58 years earlier, was unanimously overturned. Warren believed the segregation of schools was detrimental to the self-perception and learning of African-American children, asserting separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. Determined in his expansion of civil rights and wanting to prevent a divided court, Earl Warren consulted each judge in order to achieve unanimity in the ruling. These letters were written by three judges expressing their gratitude to Warren regarding his efforts and accomplishments in the Brown case. Following this 9-0 decision, the court ordered the desegregation of America with all deliberate speed. Though many Americans rallied behind Warren's decisions, there were others who disagreed with this new liberalism. The belief that the Warren court surpassed their authority as a judicial body by establishing precedents based on personal considerations rather than existing law permeated society, creating a strong opposition to the court's policies. Many, mainly conservative politicians and lawyers, were under the impression that the Warren court was overstepping their bounds and intruding on the legislative power of Congress. This opposition was expressed through the explosive appearance of impeach Earl Warren signs throughout the country, clearly showing public disagreement with the radical decisions that were handed down. The John Birch Society initiated the impeach Earl Warren movement in disagreement with his expansion of civil rights, in particular, the desegregation of schools, because of their fear of communist conspiracies in the country. Even Eisenhower, the person responsible for Warren's appointment, called his action the biggest damn fool mistake I have ever made after a series of liberal judicial rulings. The decisions of the Warren court triggered a conservative backlash and inspired calls for judicial restraint that are still sounding today. Today we recognize Warren's contributions as so influential that they extend beyond the isolated history of the Supreme Court. In much the same way that we can examine the accomplishments of George Washington in a much broader scope than just an American president, we cannot study America in the 20th century without including Warren's rulings. Not only did he monumentally further the cause of equity for all Americans and help to reform our judicial process, his contribution to judicial philosophy and the way that the Supreme Court operates are unparalleled and still in effect today. Supreme Court rulings since Warren continue to demonstrate forms of judicial activism. In Roe v. Wade, for example, the court limited the power of state legislature in prohibiting abortion, a decision made through controversial constitutional justifications still contested today. Looking into the future, judicial decisions supporting gay marriage and gay rights will be categorized as activists by many who believe the court is overreaching to defend their position. Though mostly absent before Warren's appointment as Chief Justice, judicial activism's presence in current rulings shows the lasting influence of the decisions made during his term of office in present American jurisprudence, making the Warren Court a turning point in American history.